Here we have another example of root locus. Our plant transfer function has two poles and two zeros, which means that n minus m is zero. All poles have a zero to go to. There is no excess of poles or zeros. Now let's place the poles and zeros on the S-plane. Starting with the poles, we have a pole at negative one. We have a pole at negative two. We have a zero at negative three. And you have another zero at negative four. All poles have now a zero to go to. Where is the root locus? Let's determine the segments of the real axis that have a root locus. If you start counting, we can start from plus infinity, the count up to negative one is zero. Past negative one up to negative two, the count is now one. We encountered one pole. Here we encounter another pole, the count becomes two. At negative 3, we encounter a 0. The count is now 3. And past negative 4, the count is 4. The segments of the real axis that I have an odd number now are 3 and 1. So those are between the poles and between the zeros. So the root locus exists between these two poles and also exists between these two zeros. This is not completed because a zero cannot go to a zero, a pole cannot go to a pole. Interestingly, n minus m is zero. There are no asymptotes that will bring poles or zeros to infinity or from infinity. So what happens? Because this pole needs to go to one of the zeros and this pole needs to go to the other one, and there is nothing here in this part of the real axis, these poles will have to break away at one point and somehow migrate to the zeros without crossing this part of the real axis because the count there is a even number. And because the root locus needs to be symmetric with respect to the real axis, and I have to complete this loop in a way that I have a symmetric root locus. So what is happening here? This pole is going these poles are coming together, break away from the real axis at that point, one goes up one goes down. They continue to go towards the zeros and break in back into the real axis at this point. One of them goes to the zero at negative four, the other one goes to the zero at negative three. And this is the root locus for this closed loop system. Now is this more like a novel shape or a circle? It doesn't really matter. The key information here is that these two poles when k tends to zero, they are real numbers. The system is overdamped. As we keep increasing k, now we make a system, we make the system critically damped. The poles break away from the real axis. The system is now underdamped up to this point. When it again becomes overdamped, and then they go to each of the zero. The system is never unstable, and these are the main conclusions that we can draw from this root locus.